This apparatus is called the Horizontal Flow Biofilm Reactor, or HFBR, and it's a unit that is designed for treating wastewater, specifically treating the organic component of wastewater, and also as well nutrients. Uh, primarily it would be mainly have used uh, for treating nitrogen in the past. The unit itself is comprised of a series of uh, sheets and the sheets are placed on top of one another. The idea is that the wastewater is pumped from the base of the unit onto the very top of the unit and then the wastewater is allowed to cascade over each one of the sheets in turn. You can see here one of the sheets. It's basically a plastic media that allows the wastewater to attach to it. This is the profile of the unit and this is a schematic showing how the wastewater flows from sheet onto sheet onto sheet, moving from the top sheet down throughout the system in kind of a zigzag pattern. The idea of this is that as it moves down from the top of the system to the base of the system, passing through each one of those sheets with the plastic little um, conduits on them, I guess, that uh, the wastewater is treated as it moves down from the very top to the very bottom. Here you see that sometimes wood chip is actually placed inside in the unit as well. The idea of wood chip is that it may act to denitrify the nitrogen as it moves down throughout the system. Normally how we label the system is that the influent is usually denoted as zero and then the top sheet is denoted as one, second sheet down from the top is two, third sheet three and so on and so forth. And in fact on your notes you'll be able to see that that's the configuration that is used. Sheet number zero Influent, sheet number 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, and so on. Basically, describes the different plastic sheets moving from the top of the unit down along the to the base of the unit. Included in the um, uh, information that you're given uh, regarding the laboratory, that you see that there is information regarding the different concentrations of chemical oxygen demand, ammonium. And nitrate. And you can see in the case of the chemical oxygen demand that it reduces uh, as it moves down throughout the sheets. Its initial influence is 432 milligram per litre. By the end of sheet number one it's at 351. Sheet number four moves down to 153 milligram per litre. So this all indicates that the unit is actually treating the organic content of wastewater. It's really only after around sheet number four, indeed sheet number seven, that we see any changes happening in terms of the nitrification inside in the unit. Again, nitrification may be measured by, first of all, the reduction of ammonium, and then the gradual increase in nitrate. And indeed, you can see that as the wastewater moves throughout the system, from the top down to the bottom, the ammonium gradually reduces and the nitrate gradually increases. And this is a sign that the wastewater is treated as it moves down throughout the system, and that after initial organic carbon removal, COG removal, we begin to have the process of ammonification and nitrification. The big issue with this unit is that it acts only to nitrify the wastewater, and that's the reason why we see quite large nitrate levels in the effluent. In the effluent. So it's very important when you're discussing the effluent from the unit that you bear in mind that there may be, oh, there's one of my colleagues, hello. <laughs> and uh, you will, it's very important just to bear in mind uh, the standards for discharge to urban wastewaters, particularly for uh, COD and for uh, nitrate. Sometimes what, one way we can actually reduce uh, the nitrate content in the wastewater is by introducing a carbon source. And indeed the wood chips that you see there in the tray that's just sticking out on the, the um, video at the moment, invariably what we usually do is that towards the base of the filter we find that uh, if we actually include wood chips uh, in with the filter material that it acts to denitrify the nitrified wastewater that has uh, reached that point in the filtration unit. So it's a very effective way of doing that.
In terms of the effluent, in terms of the, um, the results that I want you to write up, I would like you first of all to describe the various nutrient removal methods such as nitrification, denitrification, and phosphate removal, and the conditions necessary for them to occur. I then would like you to plot a graph of the results for COD, ammonium, and nitrate on the same graph. And what I'd like you to do is have the graph y-axis moving downwards in the reverse direction, because that's more indicative of the unit that you see here. Again, bear in mind that the effluent is applied to the uh, filtration unit from the top down through the bottom. And then finally, there are some questions in relation to the performance of the reactor.